Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. And today I'm very excited because yesterday, uh, a couple of days after Christmas, a package arrived from DJI containing the new DJI Smart Controller. Now this controller is compatible with OcuSync 2, which means that currently you can fly it with a Mavic 2 Pro and a Mavic 2 Zoom. So the screen on this thing is basically their crystal sky display. It's a 5.5 inch 1080p display that is very bright. And I'm excited about that. I live in Texas and usually, not today, but usually it's very sunny and bright outside. But the thing I'm most excited about is its integration with OcuSync 2, as well as the fact that I don't have to tie up my phone anymore to use this thing. And there it is, out of the box. And let's look in here. This is probably some kind of charger, charging cable, charging device. Looks like a USB-C to USB-A. And what's in here? Oh, the two little knobs that you put on manually. Now I'm noticing that it has a full HDMI port in the back, a full size USB-A uh, jack in the back. It's got a, a micro SD slot in the back and it's got the, on the bottom here is where the um, USB-C slot is. And there it is with the remote sticks on it. And, oh, and the antennas look like they fold up like that. There it is coming on. Uh, agree to the terms. Privacy terms, agree. Select country or region, United States, next. Wi-Fi scanning, seize my Wi-Fi network. Set for Eastern time currently. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that to Central time. One thing that I'll say right out of the gate is that I really like the fact that this has uh, Feedback, uh, it vibrates whenever you hit a button or type something into the keyboard so that you know you actually gave it a proper touch. It says that the activation was successful. Hit okay. Okay, so it's finished downloading the firmware and now it's asking me if I want to do the update. So I'm gonna hit update now. And now it is uh, updating. Now it says to do this when the battery is over 30%, which is right about where it is, and the memory is over three gigs. I believe this has 16 gigs of internal storage, so we've got space, um, that shouldn't be an issue, and I haven't used it yet, so there shouldn't be any flight data or pictures or video on it yet. So we're just kind of letting it roll right now and updating, it's at 16%. So you can see it is quite a bit larger than the Mavic 2 controller by itself. But again, if you attach the phone to the Mavic 2 controller, I think it's gonna be about the same size. And in terms of weight, um, I'd be curious to see what the weight difference between the two is. There's the previous remote phone. That is 1.0203. So just over one pound or 500 and 30, 40, 50, 550 grams. And so taking those off, putting this guy on, 690. So the um, Crystal Sky slash Smart Controller by itself does weigh more than this combo here of the phone and the uh, remote. So I'll agree to the terms of use and I'll go ahead and uh, pull down the little side piece here on the Mavic 2. You can see it is on the, you know, if you're facing the same direction as the drone, it's on the right side and what you need to do, there's a little tiny light in there that is green currently, because it's currently connected to my other remote. So I'm gonna turn off my original remote. 
Okay, just shut down the original remote and I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the button that's in there. That turns the light red, as you can see. All right, so I hit the connect to the, connect to the aircraft button and press the link button, start linking it. Hit link and it's done. Yeah, so very similar to the regular DJI uh, Go 4 app in terms of all the controls. You know, you can go in here and format your card, format internal storage, select all your camera settings. Let's see the wheel up here. That's your zoom. So I'm turning the wheel and it's zooming in on my finger, as you can probably see. Zooming out. And this should probably be the tilt. Yep, there's the camera tilt. Tilting up and down. There I am. Hey, hey. Okay, so I didn't actually see if there were any specific requirements for the uh, micro SD card. I imagine it needs to be a fairly modern one, you know, something that has a decent write speed. Uh, this one is a SanDisk Ultra um, 16 gig card and I've used it in a couple of other devices and it's worked fine. So we're going to try it out. Uh, let's see if it slots in this way or upside down. Yeah, it slots in with the pins up. There we go. Now go ahead and turn this back on. SD card. Yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff from something I, some stuff I shot previously. Um, and actually I think that came out of a couple of different devices, other, other drones. So let's see if I select something. Yep, there's playback. Okay, there's the brightness. So it's brightness all the way up. Let's see what that looks like. There's brightness all the way up. And it's pretty bright. I'm going to turn the brightness back down to 50% or 60% actually, that's the default. So it looks like that record button. I wonder if that's recording a screen capture here of what I'm doing. That would be interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit go and spin it up. First flight. Take off. And there we go. There's my backyard. I'm going to change the uh, camera settings real quick to 1080. 60 frames a second. Back to here. It says slow SD card slot. That's interesting. So let's just fly around a little bit in the backyard and see how it feels. There I am with my setup. And it won't get any closer because it knows it doesn't want to hit me. I have the uh, sensors turned on. I've actually got my exposure value at minus seven now. Put it up to zero. There's, there's exposure at zero. There's the camera tilt with the left finger up here on this wheel. Oh, one thing I just noticed is it comes with I guess a spare set of sticks right there in the back you can see those uh, those would come out in case you lost the others so I guess it comes with two sets of sticks which is nice this is your pause button it's gonna pause it in case you uh, get into trouble you're flying along and you need to just stop 
that pause will do that. And this should tilt the camera down quickly, tilt it back up quickly. Oh, there we go. Hit it up to go down, down to go up. Feels very nice. I mean, feels a lot like the remote, although actually it feels a little better because you can put your palms right here on the sides. There's plenty to grip onto. These, these spots right over here give you good grip with your fingers so you can get them right under here, as opposed to the normal one where you have your phone down here. It's a little less um, ergonomic. It's, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but, um, but this definitely feels a bit more ergonomic. Now let's go ahead and turn the um, brightness up to 100%. Adaptive brightness is off. Let's see, how do we go back to the DJI Go 4 app? There we go. That's brightness all the way up. And let's turn the brightness down now. Turn it down to 6%. There's what it looks like at 6%. It's pretty dim. Huh, some interesting, uh, interesting settings there. It has Bluetooth. Not sure what you would do with the Bluetooth, but uh, HDMI, that must allow you to take an HDMI out. And it does have this HDMI um, slot on the back. So you can turn, probably turn that slot on and off. We'll bring the drone back over here and land it. So just going through these settings real quick. Capture, I wonder if that yeah, it just does a screenshot of whatever you have on the screen at the time. These are all the um, apps that come pre-installed on your remote. Ah, so there's a there's a just um, web browser. Let's try ReadySetDrone.com. That should push us over to YouTube. Hey, that's kind of cool. Renders all right on there. Two antennas. One is 80 degrees, the other's 180. Ah, so if the drone is far away from you and you're holding it, um, like that, the you can see from this uh, image that the um, the pickup pattern is up. So with the drone above you and holding it flat, you would have them out like that. But the drone out that way, far away, you would have them like that because it looks like the antenna transmission is off the top of these things. That's interesting. Okay, so I got out my Mavic Pro Platinum, which is right there, and there's the Mavic 2 Zoom. Uh, I'm going to use the controller from the Mavic uh, Pro Platinum right here, and I'm going to use my phone as the screen on it. And just take a look at the size difference as well as the um, brightness difference. So in order to make it somewhat fair, or as fair as I can, I'm gonna go into my uh, settings here and turn this down to 60%, which looks like it's about right there. So I'll go ahead and fire up the this display, which is already on. Let's see, it's gone to sleep now. To, to wake it up, I guess you can tap the power button once. And let's go back to settings real quick. Actually go back to DJI Go 4. All right, and again, just to confirm that the uh, brightness oh, brightness is at 60%. There we go, 60% on this. So get out of that, out of here. 
And there's what it looks like at 60%. Okay, so I've got the two of them sitting here uh, side by side. And that is what the Mavic 2 Zoom looks like. And that is what the Mavic Pro Platinum looks like. Both screens set at 60%. Now both cameras are set to auto. So they're the same exposure. And you can see the uh, smart controller with Crystal Sky is a lot brighter at 60%. Now let's crank the phone up to 100%. So we'll go here, we'll go here, and we'll take the brightness all the way up to 100%. Again, this is an iPhone 10, and there it is at 100%. And there's Crystal Sky at 60%, looking at approximately the same thing out of the two drones sitting here. And they're both in auto white balance and they are both at 100 uh, ISO and 1 500th of a second shutter speed. So again, same camera settings. This one's at 100% in brightness on my phone. This one's at 60% in brightness on the smart controller. Now let's turn the smart controller up to 100% brightness. Yeah, you can, you can see the difference, or at least I can with my naked eye. Um, it's definitely brighter than the phone, and it's bigger. It's more image real estate. This is a 5.5 inch diagonal screen. I'm not sure what the iPhone is, uh, iPhone 10 is. Now, if you had one of those big jumbo iPhones or a jumbo Android, you might have as big a display, but this is a pretty good size display. And again, that is 100% brightness on the phone. That is 100% brightness on the uh, DJI Smart controller. Here it is. Not bad. You know, it's worked for me for a while, but you do have these separate pieces here. You have this gap here in the middle. You have, um, you have to connect this cable over here on the side, which is always a little bit of a challenge. It's been one of my complaints for a while. And then here's what it's like to hold the smart controller, which is just all one unit. And yeah, just feels more solid as it should. And uh, no futzing with your phone, no futzing with a connector. And again, 60% brightness on this screen, 60% brightness on this screen. I'm kind of blown away by that actually. Here's a width comparison of the two. Here's a height comparison with the phone attached. Okay, I found this on the web for height comparison, phone <laughs> attached. <laughs> Somehow I activated Siri. It's another problem you're not gonna have with, um, with this thing. You're not gonna accidentally activate Siri. Okay, so aside from a short flight in my backyard, this is my first flight out in the open. I'm at my usual spot. Uh, I got Phil here with me. Uh, running the second camera and I am ready to try out uh, the remote in a big open field flying the Mavic 2 Zoom. So I've updated firmware, everything should be good to go. Uh, right now I'm sitting at 60% brightness on the screen and standing here in the shade it looks fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and take the drone up and just kind of see how it feels. I will say one thing also that I don't know if I'll need to actually test this, but I feel like these sticks are not quite as tight as the sticks on the regular remote. Like they, maybe they're slightly longer and have more torque, but they feel just easier to move. And that's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing that, um, that I've noticed about it. But right now I'm bringing the drone over here. I took it off probably about 50 feet away from us and it's going to, fly through the scene here real quick. God, I love how quiet that thing is. All right, so one thing you will notice with this, just like your phone, but even more so because it's bigger and it's a dedicated device that you don't use all the time, you will start to notice the um, thumbprints, fingerprints on it. So I do think that these little uh, Zeiss lens wipes are a must. 
Gonna just give it a wipe down real quick. Arr, delicious. And wipe it off. And let's see if that just evaporates. And of course, once you've used the wet wipe to wipe it off, you need your DJI chamois to give it the final polish. Hey DJI, here's a, here's a great idea. Include one of these in every single one of your uh, kits that you sell with this. It's great branding and it'll keep their screens clean. All right, so we've moved out into the sunlight, obviously. Uh, it's winter time here in Texas, but even in the winter, it tends to be very bright on sunny days and the sun is definitely beating down on me. So I'm putting on my sunglasses and the reason I'm talking about this is these are polarized sunglasses and you might be wondering if polarized sunglasses look uh, weird on the screen. Sometimes when you use polarized sunglasses and you look at a screen, it makes these weird lines um, that actually make it hard to view the screen. So what we're gonna do is show you what the uh, screen looks like with a polarizer on the camera and without it so you can see the difference. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, polarizer off real quick. Remove the lens hood. And we may have to re-expose re this a little bit. There's the polarizing filter. Put the lens hood back on. And now let's take a look at it. Okay, so one other interesting point of comparison might be the Phantom 4 Pro Plus, which has the screen built into it. Now, the screen sizes are pretty similar and very similar in terms of brightness. Both of these right now are running at 100% brightness and with the drone sitting on the ground right next to me. All right, so one other quick thing that uh, we noticed as we were testing this thing is that these sticks are actually slightly different than the sticks on the original remote. These sticks have a uh, they basically have a thread, a standard thread, whereas the sticks on the old or original remote have almost like a female thread and they go into a little slot. So these are not gonna be cross compatible, which is kind of a bummer, I guess. Um, I don't know what you're gaining from the new kind of stick. I will also say they're slightly different sizes. Um, this one feels a little bit thicker. And when I mentioned earlier that it felt like it was easier to fly or easier to move these sticks, that might be because they're slightly different sticks and also the tension springs in the remote itself. But if you have the old sticks, you're not gonna be able to put them on the new remote and vice versa, just an FYI. And then also one other thing that we noticed is that the wheels have a different texture on the new remote than they do on the old remote. And they're also um, slightly bigger. They feel slightly bigger or look slightly bigger and they move a little bit different. They just have a different feeling. It might be the loading, um, the tension in the spring again, um, but it also feels like you have a bit more control with your zoom and your tilt with these new wheels. Uh, the, the control on the old wheels was great, don't get me wrong, but just they've, I think that DJI made an incremental improvement here and you feel it on this new remote with the wheels and with the sticks. All right, so the DJI Smart Controller, uh, is this thing essential to fly your Mavic 2? Absolutely not. Is it awesome to have to fly your Mavic 2? Absolutely it is. Um, the screen is very, very bright, works very well in direct sunlight, much brighter than my iPhone 10 and I think most cell phones. The convenience factor of not having to put the phone onto it is a huge win in my opinion. And the feel of it is just very nice and professional. And while it's a little bit heavy, um, the ergonomics on it are fantastic. So who's this for? This is for people who don't want the inconvenience of having to plug their phone in every time. And this is also for people who fly in bright sunlight a lot. This thing is bright, as you saw, uh, and it's very easy to see, and it works phenomenally. I'm a big fan. If you wanna know more about it, you can check the links below. If you want more videos about drones, and specifically this device, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.